In the wake of spring, nature revives. Insects start buzzing, and the mating calls of birds echo around the city. A pair of red-billed blue magpies have built a love nest among the branches and gave birth to their nestlings. In the coming weeks, they will dedicate themselves to raising their chicks, provisioning them until they flinch. But this heartwarming scene hides a deception in plain sight. Look closely. The chicks bear charcoal coats with white dots. They don't quite resemble the magpies. They are imposters. These chicks are Asian coels. Coels are brood parasites. Instead of building their own nest, they lay their eggs in the nests of other birds. This behavior is called brood parasitism. Since birth, the young coels have lived comfortably under someone else's roof. The relationship between Asian coel and red-billed blue magpie is parasitism, a relationship between two species in which one benefits at the expense of the other. The former is referred to as the parasite, the latter as the host. As the coel chicks grow, so does their appetite. The blue magpie parents must work even harder to satisfy their insatiable palate. Poor blue magpies. They pour in weeks of effort to raise children who don't belong to them. Oblivious to the deceit, they continue feeding the coel chicks even when they have outgrown the nest. In the plant kingdom, many species also rely on stealing nutrients from others to survive. A parasitic plant is a plant that derives some or all of its nutritional requirements from another living plant. Daughter prefers sunny, open areas. Using its slender stem, it entangles and climbs on its host plant. Through evolution, the leaves of daughters are reduced to minute scales that are incapable of photosynthesis. Instead, daughter has specialized organs that insert into the vascular bundle of the host, tapping into an endless supply of water and nutrients. Daughters are hardy vines. They swiftly sprawl over their hosts, adorning them with an unbearable golden crown. Over time, their hosts suffer from malnutrition or even death. High on Hong Kong's hillside, another parasitic plant flourishes on the tree canopy. Plants may look immobile, but species from the showy mistletoe family have struck a deal with birds to start their life high up early on. Most showy mistletoes offer a generous supply of flower nectar and vividly colored fruits to attract their partner in crime, the fire-breasted flower pecker. This bird, clad in olive green, is a female. 
Another one with royal blue upper parts and a scarlet chest is a male. Besides pollinating the mistletoe when drinking the nectar, flower peckers also disperse the seeds when feasting on the fruits. Having co-evolved with mistletoes, flower peckers have a shrunken digestive gizzard. Not only does it enhance the digestion efficiency of the bird, but it also prevents damage to the ingested seeds. The mutualism between mistletoe and flower peckers fosters another parasitic relationship. Bird droppings containing mistletoe seeds are viscous. When the flower pecker ingests, it must rub its bottom against tree branches to remove the sticky seeds. This in turn helps attach the mistletoe seeds to the host plants on the tree crown. Rows of seeds hang on the tree branch, waiting to spring to life. As they germinate, their roots sink into their host plants, allowing them to thrive without soil. Unlike daughters, mistletoes are a hemiparasite that is capable of photosynthesis. Apart from absorbing nutrients and water from the host, they can produce their own food to supplement their needs. The tale of parasiticism trickles down to the unassuming understory. What appears to be a red mushroom is the Hong Kong Balanophora, a succulent flowering plant that is endemic to Hong Kong. The scale-like leaves of Hong Kong Balanophora are devoid of chlorophyll. Its inflorescence features a cluster of small flowers. Although Balanophora seems to sprout from the soil, its theft lies underground with a special organ called the Hostorium, it drinks water and nutrients from the roots of the champion's bohemia. Balanophora is dioecious, meaning that an individual plant contains only male or female parts in its flowers. As many flowering plants do, they use nectars to enlist insects, like this black shield wasp, to be their pollinator. Parasitic plants rely on their hosts to survive. If the champion's bohemia went extinct, so would the Balanophora. Although parasites undoubtedly harm their hosts, from an evolutionary point of view, the host species must endure for the parasites to survive. Otherwise, if the parasite exterminated the host, they too will perish. Amid the summer heat, a female golden orb weaver spider sits at the center of her web, awaiting her prey. On her web, several covetous males eagerly anticipate mating with her. Male golden orb weavers are slender and reddish orange throughout. Among them is an imposter. It did not come here to mate, but to steal. A new prey, 
The female orb weaver immediately drops the half-eaten grasshopper and wraps up the Shan Nawa butterfly. This is the exact moment the thief is waiting for. As the orb weaver packs her meal, the red and silver dewdrop spider sneaks up from the edge of the web and gorges on the meal left behind by the orb weaver. As a master of pilfering food, the dewdrop spider is a kleptoparasite. Parasitic plants invade and attack their hosts. But they too have their nemesis. This female red-based Jezebel butterfly is laying rows of yellow eggs on the leaves of the dendrotrophy vine. While dendrotrophy vines parasitize other plants, it itself is the host plant of red-based Jezebel caterpillars. Throughout late winter to early spring, the red-based Jezebels explode in number. Both adults and larvae are everywhere. After hatching, the caterpillars assemble on the dendrotrophy vine. Seeking safety in number, this platoon can scare off predators or ensure at least a few survive if they are attacked. Their hunger for the leaves of dendrotrophy grows with their size. This in turn exerts control over the number of this parasitic plant. Yet that is not the end of the story. Although the caterpillar mob might frighten larger predators like birds, they cannot escape parasites. This caterpillar hangs motionlessly on the vine. Unlike its hungry siblings, it no longer feeds. Its underside is cushioned with fluffy yellow cocoons. The caterpillar has become the guardian of these tiny pupae. The wriggling creature is a pupating larva of an Ampantiles wasp. As others metamorphose into butterflies, this caterpillar is forever frozen in its youth. After 10 days, the cocoons start rustling.
tussling its way out of the silky cocoon, an adult Apantiles wasp emerges. This marks the end of the life of their nanny caterpillar. The Apantiles wasps are parasitoids. Unlike conventional parasites, which usually do not kill their hosts, parasitoids are like predators, feeding on a living host which they eventually kill. The red-based Jezebel caterpillar was kept alive as the wasp larvae eat it inside out. It is only till pupation do the larvae exit the caterpillar. The completion of the parasitoid's breeding cycle spells the death of the host. Differing from parasites, parasitoids need not preserve the life of their host to live. This is because parasitism is only part of their life cycle. Sometimes the hosts are killed before their life has ever begun. Early spring is the peak mating season of the lychee giant stink bug. After mating, females lay 14 green eggs on the leaves of lychee trees. These fresh eggs are popular breeding grounds for parasitoid wasps. Each wasp maneuvers around the egg patches carefully inspecting each egg. When it has found the ideal egg, it injects its eggs into the stink bug egg with an ovipositor. Wasp larvae will hatch within the stink bug egg and feast on it until emerging as adult wasps. The egg parasitoid wasps are not strong flyers. They are dwarfed by a grain of rice, but they breed rapidly and can easily exterminate the entire batch of stink bug eggs. Two weeks later, there is nothing left on the lychee tree but punctured, lifeless eggshells. Parasitoid wasps are highly efficient hunters. Meanwhile, parasitic fungi are silent killers. This female golden orb weaver spider is infected by Bovaria fungus. The kleptoparasite dewdrop spider seems a bit confused. After attaching to the spider host as spores, Bovaria produces hyphae that penetrate the exoskeleton to absorb the fluid and nutrients of the host. This leads to its eventual demise. At the later stage, white mycelium emerges from the joints and slowly engulfs the entire body. The white, dust-like spores will catch onto the breeze to infect other healthy insects. Spiders are excellent predators, but even the most agile jumping spiders cannot escape parasitic fungi. The white protrusions are the fruiting body of Gibellula fungus, a fungus that specializes in a spider diet. As the spore attaches to and infects the jumping spider, 
it starts consuming it inside out until the fruiting body emerges. In nature, many cordyceps fungi attack the muscles of their hosts to control their movements, turning them into a slave of their minds. Finally, they freeze the hosts at the upwind position and release powdery spores to infect more unsuspecting victims. We often deem parasites cunning, lazy, and devious. Yet this is such an effective way of living that natural selection has given rise to a spectacular array of parasites. After billions of years of evolution, up till now, at least 40% of animals lead a parasitic life. Parasitism is where two organisms live in close proximity. One is benefited while the other is harmed. And the host provides the parasite with nutrients and shelter. According to research, in some animal taxa, Parasitism has evolved independently 223 times. Over the course of adaptive radiation, each parasite species has become a specialist in particular organisms. Instead of judging parasites, we could, perhaps, appreciate the unique roles they play in the ecosystem and marvel at the sheer wonder of biodiversity.